What about the calories in, calories out model? You hear a lot of this. Well, it's the first law of thermodynamics, for example. It's all about calories in, calories out. There's a fundamental flaw in that. So the basic equation that people use, which is the energy balance equation, is that fat gain, for example, equals calories in minus calories out. So that's always true. That's, that's always true. But it doesn't mean that you can take that next step and say, to lose weight, you simply need to reduce your calories. So I call that the caloric reduction as primary because there's a huge assumption in that. If you look at the energy balance model, fat gained equals calories in minus calories out. If you drop your calories in, but your calories out drops at the same time, then you're not gonna lose any fat, despite the fact that you've actually reduced the number of calories that you eat. So if you look at all the studies that have been done over the past century, so even 100 years ago, we've known this, they took uh, study patients and they reduced their calories that they consume by 30%, keeping roughly the same uh, foods that they eat and so on. And then they measured the effect on the calories out, which is predominantly basal metabolic rate, which is not exercise, but the energy that's needed to keep your heart pumping and keep the lungs uh, working and the liver detoxifying and the kidneys working and the brain functioning, that's all basal metabolic rate. So if you reduce the number of calories you consume, what happens is that the number of calories you expend also goes down. So if you look at the energy balance equation, fat gain equals calories in minus calories out. The minute you drop calories in by 30%, your calories out drops by 30%. So therefore, you don't lose weight in the long term. And that's the problem. So recent studies, and um, this was uh, done in a show called The Biggest Loser. So it was a game show where they pit contestants to lose weight. What was very interesting was that they measured the energy expenditure of these contestants after they had lost all this weight. And what they found was that their, uh, the amount of calories they're burning day to day has dropped quite significantly by over 700 calories per day. So if you used to burn say 3000 calories, but now you're burning 2300 calories, that's a huge burden for you to overcome if you're trying to lose weight because you have to continually keep cutting your calories down. And again, that matches perfectly with the clinical experience, which is what happens when you try to reduce your calories. So suppose you start with a 2000 calorie a day diet and you burn in 2000, but now you wanna lose some weight. So you go down to 1500 calories a day. What happens is that your body is not so stupid as to continue burning 2,000 calories a day. It's just like an energy deficit that it's not gonna have. If it continued to burn 2,000 calories a day, you'd lose weight, lose weight, lose weight, and then you'd die. The body doesn't wanna do that. So if you're only gonna take in 1,500, your body immediately reduces its energy expenditure by to, to 1,500 calories. So what happens is that you feel more tired, you feel cold, you feel hungry, you feel sluggish. And that's what everybody feels like when they're on a diet. But the worst part is that the weight gain eventually stops and then it starts to come back because your body actually goes a little bit lower. So that's the problem with this whole calories in, calories out model is that they assume that the calories out and the calories that you take in are completely independent, but they're actually not. When you drop the one, you drop the other and that's why those diets are actually doomed to fail. In fact, we know this because for the past 100 years, every single study that has done this has shown that there's no lasting weight loss and again, meshes perfectly with our, all of our personal experience, which is that people don't lose weight using that sort of uh, calorie reduction strategy.